Hi guys, welcome back. So today I've got another tutorial for you. We're going to be looking at creating this uh, kind of smooth scroll effect. Okay, as you can see, we get a kind of subtle animation when our uh, images enter the viewport. And um, this is all achieved using vanilla JavaScript. I've not used any uh, libraries for this effect. And we can take it as far as we want, really. I mean, if you wanted to add like a kind of skew effect here, uh, we can do. Just add that now. And you'll see now when we scroll, we get that kind of a uh, cool skewed effect on our images, okay? And we're using the uh, linear interpolation, which I discussed in my previous video, video. so we could set the uh, ease to 0.1, and that will just really slow down the animation. You can see here, we get that really slow. But we we basically, um, we're using this transform, we're getting this nice, we're trying to make the animations as smooth as possible, okay? Usually with this, with this kind of stuff, it can be quite janky, so, there's a sweet spot really with this ease variable at 0.1. I find that's the kind of the nicest uh, easing to use. But yeah, let's just jump straight into this, guys. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Okay, guys. So just to save time, um, I've already uh, created an index.html file, a style.css file, and a, there's an empty JS file. And then I've also got this images folder just containing um, eight random images sourced from unsplash.com. Um, all JPEG images, and I've just uh, named, uh, done this naming convention of one to eight here, okay? Um, so yeah, as I said, I've already pre-written the HTML and CSS just to save time. So in the HTML file, you can see I've just got the um, usual boilerplate up and running. I'm linking to the um, style.css uh, file in the head section, and I've just uh, added smooth scroll as the title. Um, in the body, you can see um, I just have this main div, okay? So this is going to be a fixed element and we're basically just going to be um, applying transformations to this container and the images uh, within this container, okay? So we're going to set this main div to fix, so we won't actually be scrolling this element. Okay, within this main div, we have this div with a class of container. Um, and as I said, this is what we're going to be using to scroll. And then within this container, we have um, eight um, uh, divs with a class of item and this contains an inner div with a class of image wrap, okay? I've just duplicated that seven times so we have eight of these item divs, okay? And then finally for our HTML, you can see at the bottom I'm just linking to our app.js file in the script source tag. Okay, so now if we move to our CSS, and I'll take that part out, you can see here I've just set the, um, the global settings up here. So we have our margin zero, padding zero, and box size of the border box just to remove all the default margin margins from our page. Um, the main uh, element, as I said, we set the position to fixed and that's going to take up the entire screen, okay? So we set the top to zero, the left to zero, we fill the screen to 100% of the width and 100 view pool heights to fill the height 100% as well. And then the next thing we set to our container, so again, we're positioning this absolute and we're going to use CSS grid for the display, okay? So set display grid there. And then we're going to have two columns, okay? So if I open this in live server, okay? And then if we just do it, in open up the dev tools, um, you can see if we go to our container, oh, let me just make this screen a bit bigger. If you go to our container, you can see we get two columns there. Okay, so you can see the two columns and we have this gap here, okay? So in order to get them columns, we've used this grid template columns here and we've set our two columns to be 47.5% uh, of the width of each, okay? So we just state that twice after grid template columns. I've then set a gap of 5%, just have a gap between the two columns and then I'm setting the top of our container to be zero. So that will be touching the top of our uh, main element here and then I'm setting the left of 5%, okay? And that just gives us, you can see that bit of, that 5% bit of white space here, okay? And we get 5% white space on the other side as we've set the width of our container to 90%, okay? So that gives us 5% white space on each side of the container. And then I've just set the height of this container to 2,500 pixels. And then finally here, I'm just setting the wheel change to transform. And what this does, this just optimizes the browser and it just basically just um, it basically tells the browser that we're going to be performing transform adjustments on this uh, element. Okay. Uh, next thing we do is select our dot item. Okay. So remember we have eight items here, um, and with the items we're just positioning those relative. 
um, and we're just doing left 50%, top 50%, and we're translating that by minus 50%, and that was just center the item divs, okay? So you can see we have our first item here that's centered, um, second item centered to the column as well. And then, so after that, we're just setting the width um, of the item to fill 100% of the column. And then we've got an interesting technique here, okay? So we set the height to zero, and then you'll see, so, but you'll notice when we do hover our items, the height isn't zero, okay? You can see there is a height there. And then we're applying the height by using this padding bottom. And you can see I've set the padding bottom here to 56.25%. Uh, and what this is, um, this is basically just a 16 to nine aspect ratio, okay? So uh, that just, you'll see all of our images are the same size and they're all taking up this, uh, this this 16 to nine uh, aspect ratio, okay? And then uh, very important, we're setting overflow of hidden here, okay? So you'll see within our item elements, we have this image, okay, this image wrap, and you see the parent is smaller, okay? We get our overflow. This is important to make this, effect, this smooth scrolling effect work, okay? And then underneath that, we've got our image wrap next. And we're starting off by creating a variable here called overflow, and we're setting that to 40 pixels. Okay, we're then positioning this image wrap absolute, so we can position it relative to our item, the parent item element. We're setting the width to 100%, and then for the height, we're uh, using the CSS calc function, okay? And what we're doing, we're taking 100% of the parent container, and then we're adding um, that 40 pixels, so this overflow variable, and we're times that by two. So we're adding 80 pixels in total, okay? Um, and then what we're doing with this top part here is using the calc function again, and then we're just saying minus one times that 40 pixels. So the top will be minus 40 pixels, okay? So if we come back here, you can see um, this, this image wrap is minus 40 pixels relative to the parent item container, okay? You can see in the overflow layer, it goes above minus 40 pixels. So we have minus 40 pixels overflow on the top and the bottom of the parent div, okay? And we can't see that overflow as we set the overflow to hidden for the item, okay? And then finally, um, with this, we're just setting the background repeat to no repeat, the background size to cover, so the image, is, image, image covers the image wrap div. And then once again, we're setting the real change to transform because we're going to be performing transformations on these image divs as well. And then finally, we're just doing a media query at the bottom. We're saying when our screen reaches 760 pixels, we just want our container to have one column as opposed to the two columns we set up here. So you'll see when we go to 760 pixels or just below, so we're at 724 now, you can now see uh, our container just going into one column, okay? So that's it for our CSS. Now let's go into the JavaScript, okay? So the first we need to do is set some variables. Okay, so I'm going to say here, let current equal zero. Then we're going to say let target equal zero and let ease equal 0.1. Okay, so what this current variable is, the current um, will be, um, this will be the, uh, the amount of pixels that, that, we, that our current container is scrolled by and a target will be our current scroll position, okay? And then we're going to be using a lerp function and we're going to take in this ease uh, variable here and we're going to basically use the lerp function to create this smooth scrolling effect, okay? So if you're not used, if you don't know what a lerp function is, check out my previous video where I explain it and how to use it for these smooth animation effects, okay? Next thing underneath this, I'm going to set three variables. We're going to say window width and then we're going to say container uh, height and then image height like so. And then finally, we want one more, just skew diff, okay? So set those four variables. You'll see why we're using these shortly. Um, next one I do is just get our, let's just set our images up, okay, and our container. So let's just do some selectors here. We'll say container equals document dot query selector and here we're just going to say dot container okay and then underneath that I'm going to say let images equal array dot from 
and here we're going to say document dot query selector all and then remember we gave our images a class of image underscore wrap or the divs rather okay so now if we console dot log images we should have in the console yeah there's our eight images okay let's make it a bit bigger you can see now they're next to each other in the two columns okay so now let's supply the um images uh let's just uh, remember we had these folder of images here so we're going to use javascript just to apply these images to the divs okay so let's do that let's just say images dot for each and then we're going to pass in the image as well as the index with the for each function and then do an arrow function off that and we'll just say um image dot style dot background oh, let's do that style dot background image uh, and that's going to equal and we're going to say back ticks here and then we're going to use the URL okay and then we're going to point the URL to our images folder so dot forward slash images and then here we'll just say a template literal and we'll just say idx plus one and then we'll just say dot jpeg okay and the reason we're using idx plus one remember that the index usually starts at zero and for my naming convention here, I've just done one, two, three. So we're starting at one. So that's why I'm just adding the one here. Okay, so if we save that, you can see now we get our images appear. Okay, so that's looking good. Remember, we can't scroll yet as our main element's fixed. So we need to adjust that shortly. Um, now, kind of underneath this, um, I'm going to just add that lerp function we spoke about earlier. So we'll just say function lerp. And this stands for linear interpolation. Okay, and that's the... That's the um, function which uh, allows us to perform these smooth scrolling effects. So I'm just going, this function is going to take in a start, okay, which will be the, the current variable we set up here. And then it takes in an end, which is going to be the target. And then it takes in an ease parameter. We'll just call it the T variable for now. Okay, and this is going to return. And the calculation for this is start uh, times uh, one minus T. And then that's got to be in brackets. And then we're just going to say plus end times t. Okay, so just to give you a quick overview of what this does, we'll just say console.log lerp and say, for example, if I wanted to get the number halfway between 10 and 20, which is 15, okay? So we'll put in the start variable, which is 10, put in the end variable, which is 20, and halfway through, we have to use 0.5 for half, okay? So we should get 15 log to the terminal when we do. So if we did, for example, halfway between um, uh, f five and 10, which is seven and a half, okay, 7.5. So that's how this lerp function's working. Okay, so now come underneath this, next we want to do is we're going to create a function to set our, trans our transforms on certain elements, okay? So we'll say function set transform. And here this takes in an element we want to transform as well as a transformation we want to apply, okay? And then here we'll just say l.style.transform, and that's going to equal, and here we'll just say transform, okay? Next thing we want to do, come underneath this, we're going to say function setup animation. So say function setup animation. And this is going to be the function we load when we first load the page, okay? So first we want to do is get our dimensions. So we're going to say window, width, which is the variable we set at the top. Remember up here we set window width and that's going to equal window, why is it doing capitals? Okay, window dot inner width. And that just takes the inner width of the window, okay? And then we're just going to say after that, container height. And that's going to equal container dot get bounding client rect and here we can access the height okay and that will get the height of our container okay so for example if i just log this here remember we set our container to 2500 pixels so if i say console.log container height we should get 2500 pixels and we do okay so that's what that uh, get bounding client rect dot height does 
Okay, next thing we want to do here is we're going to say image height next. And that is going to equal the container height, so 2,500 pixels. And then we're going to divide, and then we're going to use a ternary operator here, okay? So we're going to say if the window width is greater than 760 pixels, so let's just say 760, do a question mark, then we'll say images.length divided by two, okay? Otherwise, we'll just say, let me just close this down to make it more viewable, we'll say images.length. It's just to break down, just to break down what's going on here. We're saying if the window width is greater than 760, then we're taking the images.length and dividing it by two. Because remember, when we're over 760 pixels, we get two images per row. Okay, so that's why we're dividing it by two. So 2,500 uh, images.length is eight divided by two. Um, so 2,500 divided by four, that would be. Okay, and that will give us the uh, image height we want to use for our calculations. Okay, otherwise we just use the images.length, which is eight, when we're below 760, as we have eight images. You can't see them yet because you can't scroll. Okay, so now underneath this, next thing we want to do is we want to set the height uh, of the body for scrolling. Okay, so here we're just going to say document dot body dot style dot height and that's going to equal uh, we'll do a back tick here template this rule and we'll just say container height picks like so okay so now if we just run this setup animation you'll see at the moment we haven't got any scroll bar okay so we can't scroll so if we uh, just do setup animation now you should see we now get the scroll bar appear Okay, obviously it's not um, scrolling as this is a fixed element still, but that allows us to scroll a page and we'll be able to use this to perform a transformation on this container div, okay? So now that that's done, we'll come underneath this and we'll just uh, set up a function called smooth scroll. So say function smooth scroll like so. And then in here, first we want to do is set the current variable at the top here. So we're going to say current and this is going to, we're going to use that lerp function now, okay? And this will take in, so the start will be the current position, okay? And then the end will be the target, okay? And we set it at naught for now, but we're going to use the window.scroll wire, scroll wire position to set that target in this function. Okay, so that will take in the target for the end, and then the t variable, we'll just use this ease variable for now. So just passing ease here, set the amount set to 10%, 0.1. Okay, and then kind of underneath this, we're going to say current, we just want to adjust that slightly, we're going to say equals pass float. I'll tell you why we're doing this in a second. And here we're just going to say uh, current dot two fixed and two. And what this does, when we're um, performing these calculations, when we use this lab function, sometimes we can get really, um, like these float num these floats with a, a large amount of decimal places, okay? And what we're doing here is we're just um, breaking that down to a, a float with two decimal places. That's what this two fixed function does. And that will just allow um, the calculation to be formed more smoothly. It just optimized the performance of this uh, animation. As obviously if we have a large amount of decimal places, there's a lot more calculation that needs to occur and it can slow it down, okay? So then after that, next thing we want to do is just set the target variable and that's going to equal window.scroll wire. So that's the current scroll position, okay? And then, so next thing we want to do here is say set transform. And remember that's that function up here and we pass in the element and the transform we want to apply. So here, we're just going to pass in the container and here we want to apply just do back ticks, I'm going to say translate on the Y axis. And here we just want to say uh, template literal again, minus current. Okay, we want to use the current variable to perform this transformation, pixels. Okay, so now if we, we, we should do a smooth scroll, we can apply the smooth scroll in here in this setup animation function. And then what we need to do as well is after this set transformation, uh, we just want to request animation frame, okay? Smooth scroll, pass the smooth scroll function. So this will basically, this request animation frame will keep calling this function continuously 
Um, so now it will always be watching that and now we can scroll our page, okay? And obviously we, at the moment we could slow this down if we wanted to, if we wanted it to be really slow, you can see now we get that kind of smooth effect. Obviously you don't want it too slow, that can be quite annoying for the end user. But I find tend to find the sweet spots around you know 0 0.06 to 0. Point, or just 10%. Okay. So we're nearly there, guys. The last thing we want to do is just obviously get this kind of image effect where it looks like they're animating. Okay, we get a nice smooth scrolling kind of uh, effect. So to do that, let's create another function underneath this. We'll say function update uh, images. And then here we'll just say we need to set a few more variables in here. This is, um, we'll just say let ratio equals, and this is going to take the current, okay? And then we're going to divide that by the image height, which we, um, where do we set that? We set that here, okay? And then once we've got the ratio, we're going to say, we're going to set, we're going to create two more variables here. So say intersection ratio index, like so, and then we'll say intersection ratio value. Okay, so we have our two variables there we're going to use. And once we've set these, we want to cycle for our images again. So we'll say images.foreach, and then again, take in the image and the index, and then we do an arrow function. And here, we're just going to say intersection uh, ratio index equals window, and then we want to do another ternary operator here actually. So we're going to say window width, if it's greater than 760 pixels, like so, we'll just say uh, pass int, and then we want to take in the index divided by two, okay? Otherwise, we'll just do uh, the index. So again, what's happened here, we just, we're just calculating this intersection ratio, uh, ratio like so. Uh, what's going on there? Okay. Um, why is that coming up? Intersection ratio index. It's saying add for let const of our keywords to this declaration. The end from there. Is that working now? Oh, what's it doing? Come on. Right, okay, that's better. Um, so we're saying intersection ratio index that equals the window width, okay, if it's greater than 760 then obviously we're using the index divided by two as we have two images per, per row when it's greater than 760 pixels. Otherwise, we're just using the index, okay? And then the next thing we want to do underneath this, we're going to say intersection ratio value. That's going to equal the ratio we just created, okay? And then minus intersection um, ratio index, okay? And then what we can do now is we're just going to use that set transform uh, function again, we're going to pass in the image, and then the transform we want to do apply to this is translate y, and then we're just going to take in this, we're going to do a, t um, a ternary operator, a template literal, sorry. We're going to say intersection ratio index uh, value, sorry. And then we're just going to, that's quite a small number, so we're going to uh, multiply that by 50 and then just add pixels. Okay, so now you can see oh, what we need to do here as well is come underneath here and just uh, add that update images function. So say update images, like so. And now you can see we get that kind of nice, let's just make this a bit bigger. Okay, so now you can see we get that kind of nice smooth scrolling effect and our images move with that nice kind of subtle animation. Okay, uh, let's try and make this a bit more. See if we can get it. Just play around with these values really guys, see what you like. You can see the larger you make the number, the more kind of, I think that's too much actually. Let's make it 70. 
yeah, that's why it's important to have that overflow hidden because you get that nice kind of subtle animation effect. Okay, you can also, uh, you know, take this as far as you want, really. We could apply a skew, okay? So remember we set this skew diff variable up here. What we can do, if you come down to our smooth scroll function, um, we can say skew diff, and here we can just say equals, and we can take in the target, and we can subtract uh, the current, okay? And then if we times that by uh, 0.015, I think that's the sweet spot for this kind of skew effect. And then if we add the skew here, so say skew y, and then we can say uh, skew diff deg, like so. Now you can see we get that nice kind of skew effect. Okay, so this, that's what this kind of smooth scrolling does. Again, if you slow this down, let's try it at say not point, we'll do 6% on the ease to make it a bit slower. But there you go, there's our kind of nice smooth scroll animation effect. So yeah, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, thanks for watching. I uh, usually achieve this kind of, it's a lot easier just to implement like this with a library, but I really wanted to try and figure it out for myself. Obviously, there's a, a few complex calculations in here which are quite hard to explain, and it took me a while to figure this out, to be honest. But, you know, it, it is, it's easier to, to use like animation libraries, like um, locomotive scroll, that kind of thing. But yeah, this is my implementation of it in vanilla JavaScript. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Cheers.